Welcome to the Salt Strong Podcast, disrupting fishing entertainment as you know it. Prepare to laugh. Prepare to get to know fishing legends in a whole new and unfiltered way. And on occasion, you might even learn a thing or two about fishing. Here's your host, Joe Simons, like diamonds. Hello, Salt Strong Nation, Joe Simons, like diamonds. We are back. Another episode here, and this is going to be a great one backstory of how a lot of this happened i'm guessing it was two months ago i did probably our most controversial podcast and it was about some of the facebook and really just social media censorship in general and i talked about how you know we have a pretty large facebook group of seventy five thousand plus members and it's almost every single morning i wake up and there's something that facebook has deleted because it goes against their guidelines now there are many times thank you facebook that you're helping us out where there's been you know just something that's blatantly inappropriate or um you know even someone's threatening someone like that stuff needs to go but there's been tons of them on the flip side that were 100 percent appropriate where if there's even a drop of blood or even that, the one example I used multiple times was just a largemouth bass that had his gills flaring up a little bit, and you could see the red, and they just, boom, done. Not appropriate. It goes against our guidelines of, you know, I, I guess, inflicting harm or killing animal. I don't know. The, the thing didn't die. Uh, but anyhow, it just got me thinking, like, man, like, all it takes is one person that's at the top, some senior VP of what we're going to say is good and bad on our platform up at Facebook or any of these platforms to not be a fan of hunting and fishing. And in a literally like a click of a button, they can delete the whole thing. And so great guys here go wild. I had the app on my phone, honestly, didn't, didn't use it just because we were building a lot of stuff. I'm getting back in. We have our own little custom uh, trail as the word. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, on this app and they reached out to me and I was like, oh man, this is so cool. We're kind of both dealing with the same stuff, but you guys took it to a whole nother level. So Brad and Jacob, welcome to the show. Thanks, man. I I need your energy. I I envy that right now. You're coming in so hyped up. Uh, But dude, the one thing I'll say before we talk about what it even is, what's scary and and this makes me think about this from posting a picture of a fish all the way up through elections is how it's actually a lot of it's not a human a lot of this stuff yes. is artificial intelligence automated we're dealing with this right now you know we sell stuff and we're running our own ad campaigns and we're getting blocked for things like binoculars and it's like that's that's a that's a firearm accessory is what they keep telling us and we finally you know you can appeal and we get this stuff appealed and we're talking to a human the human's like i have no idea why this keeps getting flagged and they're basically admitting that it's an automated thing that's happening. We've had this happen with Google, with YouTube, with Facebook. And these algorithms are designed, whether it's to look at the image or to look at the t- content or even to scrape your own website, which is what they've told us they're doing now. That's why we're getting flagged. Uh, so a lot of this stuff is it's artificial intelligence that is, however, designed by a human. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> originally created this, unless we're living in this really scary world uh, uh, that I'm not aware of yet. And this is all simulation, which maybe maybe that's the case. I don't know. <laughs> Jacob, are you a robot with that perfect hair? <laughs> I cannot deny it. <laughs> no one should have locks that good Seriously? in his mid-30s, man. Like I've been losing my hair since I was 18. So <laughs> I'm envious. I love it. <laughs> so let's let's circle back and assume that there's actually real people coding all this stuff and that we're not just all being taken over by robots. Like what what gave you guys the because it's a lot of work. I know you guys have multiple developers, coders, like this is not just two people doing this. Like uh, what 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 was was there like a like a tipping point or something where you said, man, we're going to do this. Cause I'm looking at the site. It's a social media for the outdoors. I love it. Uh, discover gear, learn new tactics, get better, faster. So where, where did all this come from? How long have you guys been at this? I, the ironic part is you you've really got two guys here who couldn't code a lick if we tried. Like Jacob and I are not the ones at all building the technology. We're yeah. the ones that get out and get to tell people about it. And so I'm Brad Luttrell, co-founder and CEO. Got Jacob here. Uh, Jacob's he- heads up our business development efforts and has kind of become our 
co-host of our show gearbox talk and uh, even this morning we filmed an in-person one for pond fishing an intro to pond fishing cool that'll be coming out here in the next couple of weeks um but you know back in 2016 at the time i thought it was the nastiest election we'd ever seen i had no idea what was coming next time <laughs> but you know the you know social media tempers are flared and i was um i really sucked at deer hunting this is kind of where this all started was me trying to get better at deer hunting I grew up in Southeast Kentucky, loved to hunt and fish, even though I'm relatively bad at both at this time, I've gotten a lot better at hunting largely uh, with the help of our platform. Yeah. Uh, but I, I was, I was thinking about it. And I, at the time I was like, man, I don't even know if I want to post a picture of my deer, if I get one this year, you know, you just kind of in the woods, have having thoughts, just like you would with fishing, you know, you kind of just, your mind gets to wonder a little bit, which is part of what I love so much about it. And I thought, man, what a shame to have something that I love so much. And I'm afraid to talk about it on this platform for being harassed. And the more I thought about that, the more I kind of, I was like, I can't be the only person here. And I was in advertising at the time. So kind of like you guys diving in, I was in the same boat. I had a job I loved. I was a creative director at an ad agency. We built websites all the time, did branding and marketing. And I, I got to thinking about that and, and I started researching the industry. I'd never thought about hunting and fishing as an industry. It was just something I grew up doing and, and off-roading. And when I started looking into the industry and how big it was and honestly, how important it is for our economy, you know, uh, hunting, uh, it might just be hunting alone, I think, employs more people than Walmart. You know, I mean, this it's huge. It's a huge impact. 2% or, or $2 of every hundred spent in the U.S. go to this industry. And, and so when I started seeing that, I was like, man, there's definitely something to be had here. I can make this work. I don't know how. I've never done it at this scale before, but I'm, I think I'm going to try to start my own thing. So at that time, you know, Jacob and I have known each other. What have we known each other for now, Jacob? 16 years? I lost count, man. Yeah. Wow. So, so uh, 16 years, but I, I hadn't, what's the really definitely, funny definitely not a robot, is, by the way, a robot would have known it like, like that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Uh, unless it was programmed to have human tendencies. Uh, <laughs> it's like, insert don't delay. Ask math questions. Yeah. That'll definitely yeah. show you the real answer. Backslash delay. Uh, <laughs> anyways, the, um, the funny thing is Jacob and I, Jacob and I, and my co-founder at go out, Zach had actually tried to start a company a few years prior and it got me fired from my full-time gig, which is long, <laughs> long story in itself. But th so he and I kind of had these run-ins together. And when I started go Wild, it wasn't long. He invited me out to lunch and he's like, I'm coming. Like, you're not stopping me from working with you guys. It's going to happen. Uh, would we go get burgers? Yep. Burgers <laughs> and fries. Yeah, awesome. sitting there over burger and fries. Jacob told me how one day he's going to be with us. Uh, but man, we started in a basement, four guys, my dog, some pizza and beers. And, uh, you know, I think I had $500 left from my last business that I'd ran a few years ago. I found a, a bank account that I forgot to close. And I was like, all right, we're going to do it with 500 bucks and see Dang. how long we get. Uh, and and so we we bootstrapped it for a year, launched that social platform you were kind of talking about. And a lot of the, what, what happened was there, we did very much get that verification of, oh my God, I hate these other social platforms, yeah. right? We launched in 2017, the year after that election. And then funny enough, uh, the biggest boom we've ever had happened in, in 2020 uh, with all this madness that's gone on, you know, and then January of this year with all the craziness that happened at the Capitol, I think people were just like, I'm so sick of all this stuff. I'd rather, like, I like to hunt and fish and, and hike and camp. And I'd rather talk about those things with like-minded people. And we, our platform kind of serves as an escape from all that. If you ever see anybody post about politics on Go Wild, it's kind of funny. They they're like you'll see two or three people be like, "Dude, we don't do that here. That's just not it what Go Wild's crazy. about." <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the the origin story though is very much of what you're talking about. Of uh, we saw that our prediction was that if Facebook was going to allow the bullying of people that were hunting, it started there. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we thought this would spread to other outdoor activities. And we also thought that if they would allow the content to be bullied, eventually they were going to apply that to their advertising practices. And that's where the business model would be is that, you know, these, these brands, not just, I mean, firearms are the obvious one. You know, I, I think even then you couldn't advertise a gun on Facebook, but accessories, which is now being defined as far out as like camo. I mean, there's camo companies that struggle to get campaigns off the wow. ground. And, uh, you know, by the, just by the nature of, of their business and, you know, um, holsters and scopes are kind of obvious accessories that are struggling too, but it's, it's gotten so far out there that even the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation struggled to get 
the, uh, an ad campaign up to get donations. And they're one of the biggest conservation groups in the country. Mm -hmm. So even, even them, you know, not necessarily having any direct ties. I mean, they obviously promote the, the health of the herd for hunting, but I mean, they, they've done more for habitat than a lot of other groups, but even that they're struggling. And you use the word bullying and so some of you might be listening because when you first said it, I was like, ah, and then I was like, oh yeah, you know, I remember like, uh, it's Kendall Jones or Kendall, the girl yeah. from Texas. Yeah. I mean, yeah. she and a, and a whole slew of other, you know, young females who are into hunting and fishing they were getting death threats. I mean, literally yeah. people like had that, like crazy. Yeah. And I've had and, to, we reported uh, it to the FBI, man. I really? had to report like two serious, credible death threats when we first started all of this on go wild with our Instagram content. Um, I mean, I literally had a conversation with an FBI agent. <laughs> wow. That's yeah. nuts. Yeah. And I think, I think for the average angler or hunter, they might not see some of that. Right. But the, the bigger you get, the bigger, the bullseye on your back kind of pun intended. And I mean, there are people out there that, that dislike and disapprove of hunting and fishing to the point they're sending death threats and doing pretty crazy stuff. Um, and so, all right, so circle back, you got four of you guys drinking some beers, having some pizza, you got 500 bucks. You, you, <laughs> you, did you build an app first or did you start with the actual site? A uh, good question. So we did build an app first. Okay. Um, the, my co-founders were, were a data scientist, a designer and a coder. So we, we built an iPhone only app first, actually, it took us about six more months to get Android. Mm -hmm. So we, we kind of consider that a beta period. So we launched it in the fall of 2017. Uh, Android came in March of 2018. And then from there, um, you know, I, I actually uh, quit my job to uh, I, I was it was the end of February 2018. And my wife was very pregnant, like eight and a half months pregnant. <laughs> Uh, for anybody that doesn't know or hasn't had a baby, that's a few weeks from a baby. <laughs> okay. and, and, so, and the wife is absolutely miserable. She feels horrible. She just wants it to get over with. Yes. And so we're at that point. I'm like, honey, I'm going to quit my job for this risky startup. She's like, you're insane, but I guess let's do it. And not to be outdone, my co-founder, Chris, made sure his wife was pregnant when he quit too. And then a well, like the next year when Jacob joined us, uh, I was like, so... There's this thing like when you go, join Go Wild, your wife might be pregnant. He's like, "Oh yeah, I need to talk to you about that." <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, Jacob. Yeah. How long? What was the situation? Uh, we had uh, baby was born in late June, and I came here in August. So it was, oh yeah, my so gosh! Had, he's like, epic. "I can't quit yet because I'm on. I'm getting ready to go on paternity leave, and I don't want to quit yeah. while I'm on paternity leave." <laughs> <laughs> and we just hired another guy. Same scenario as Jacob. So there's literally something in the water. Like that when you join our, our our risky startup, you know, you're going to have all these life milestones at once. So in 2018, <laughs> all of the founders end up going. We we started raising money. You know, we did the venture capital thing. Yep. And we started going full time and 2019, we got a partnership with Garmin, which was big for us. We have a cool activity tracking integration with all the Garmin wearables. Uh, but, but around that time, man, um, it was still mostly app based. Like our website was a really crappy Shopify site. You could buy t-shirts like Jacob's got on there and some stickers and stuff like that, but it was very minimal, right? Let's see the t-shirt brother. I can't, I can only see the top. Oh yeah. yeah. We still got a few of Good. those left. So those are kind of old school, but we, we you know, we were mostly just using a Shopify site to have a download button for the app and then to promote that stuff. Well, in 2019, we kind of realized that the platform was being used to crowdsource knowledge about gear. And so we, we, we see this happening. It's like, okay, well, this is more popular than anything we've ever done. And in fact, we've had a few things that we tried that just didn't work out quite so well. Like yeah. we had a phone, you could tra activity track on the phone. We retired that. It just wasn't as popular as the gear. Uh, we had a, a cool recipe integration, wasn't as popular as the gear. So we've really found our audience is just gear crazy. And, you know, 70% of our audience is interacting with gear every month. And so we built in this really, well, we, we see all these conversations going on. I'll get to that part in a second. So we see all these conversations going on. Jacob says, hey, I'm new to fly fishing. No, actually, it's not a terrible example because Jacob's like teaching us to fly fish, but we'll go with it here. <laughs> um, Jacob's like, hey, man, I've never fly fished a day in my life. But I love bass fishing. I'd like to know how to get into this, what gear to buy. And people are recommending it. And as with any social platform, you're, you got all these people leaving your site, going out to other sites. They're bringing back Amazon links or janky screenshots or whatever. Yeah. And <laughs> we were like, man, this 
this sucks. Like as a user of the platform, if you're trying to ask questions about gear, it sucks and it sucks everywhere. So how can we fix it and do it better? Yeah. So we, 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 we came up with this idea of using all this affiliate data. So, you know, brands or, or blogs, a lot of times I have affiliates with a company, they get a percentage of sales, anything they drive. Yeah. Well, the other thing that nobody else seems to be interested in, but we were crazy about was the data that comes with those affiliate feeds. So we took that and fed that into our platform. To, we've turned this into half a million products in Go Wild that you can tag. Dang. Which it sounds like a ton and it is a ton, but still you get somebody every now and then it's like, Hey man, you don't have my, and then they go off to some brand that you've never heard of. Um, so we're still working on building all that out. We, we add about a brand a, a week or every two weeks right now. But, uh, as a, as a platform, you know, when we launched that in six weeks, it was the most popular thing we'd ever done historically ever, wow. like with ever it, 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 it gotten more traction because what's cool about it is if, if you tag a product your story now lives on that product page. So as you're researching products, like if you go onto our website or our, our web, the website or the platform now, and you look up Garmin Instinct, you'll see all the social posts that are attached to that. You can see people having a conversation about it. We're about to roll out a second phase of that where it'll even tell you the data. Like this is usually used for whitetail hunting or this is used for bass fishing or, or whatever it cool. is, right? Because we've got 200 species in the trophy logs that we can assign that data to. So it's really cool from the shopping and the social side. We did that um, through all of 2019 and through 2020. And then we started working on that website you're talking about. We finally got our uh, stuff together, hired a web developer and built a, a good website. And um, last year through the pandemic, you know, Jacob and I as the sales guys were getting clobbered. Uh, everybody's like, man, I bet you guys are doing great. But, you know, it was kind of a tough time if you're an advertising driven business, which we yeah. were. Nobody, I don't know if you didn't read the news guys, but like no one needed help. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> selling anything in the outdoor space, right? Like, I, I mean, you probably saw this. Song. Well, I know you did because we did a podcast together. Like, yeah. you can't find anything fishing related right now. Nuts. You know, it's it's, it's nuts. So we, and, and we actually ammo, started, ammo could be the worst, right? Of all it's things. It's the worst. Yeah. I think it's the worst. Jacob, I mean, what do you think? You're talking to the brands more than I am, but. Yeah, I would say ammo and then like a Shimano SLX is probably <laughs> the top two things I'm missing right now. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah. So, so we, so we saw that comment and, and, and after a really bad Q2, like our worst quarter since starting the business, yeah. we said, okay, we can either die trying on, on the way we're doing things now, or we can take control of our own destiny and start tapping into what we know about gear and trying to use it to sell it directly. So we, we did start to sell some gear um, on our platform. We've got about 15,000 products that we're using that social side to help route people to um, products, information on products. The Garmin instincts are really cool one to look up. I mean, a lot of the Garmin line that we have, you can look up those products, see people interacting with it. Um, so so that's that that all tied in with the website as it stands today, which launched in November. And we're, we're so um, demanding of ourselves, we're about to scrap all that and start over again. <laughs> <laughs> on the website, uh, which is painful, but, uh, you know, I think it needs to be done, but yeah, man, that's kind of like in, in my, what did I do? I probably did that in like 10 minutes, but that's kind of the journey of the last five years of where it's got, where we've been. Wow. Yeah. So like all of us is entrepreneurs and small business owners, you've had to pivot and what it looks like mm -hmm. today was not what you started with. Shocking. No, I, it's funny. Cause we, we thought at some point we may land on secondary gear sales. And that was like, it made sense, right? Like, okay, everybody wants to, you, you buy a fishing rod. You don't want to just give it away. You want to get your money, some money back yeah. out of it. And, and the more we looked into that and the more we realized the kind of things we dealt with, we're like, man, I don't know, like trading, like doing this with guns and bows and knives. It's, it's just, there was a lot to figure out. There's a lot of, we could see a lot of future lawsuits. Yes. <laughs> so, so we, we decided to go the retail route for a lot of obvious reasons. <laughs> Understand. And so to talk to me about today, I know you have hunting and fishing. You're also getting in like, you're going to ultimately try to win outdoors everything or, or no, man, I don't know. I mean, that's a really great question. Um, the, for today, Jacob and I mostly talk to the Huntfish brands. Uh, mm -hmm. Huntfish Shoot, I would say. Shoot has become more and more important for us over time because they're the most um, uh, most challenged on other platforms, even from just posting content. I mean, yeah. um, like you guys said, you, you you have a lot of stuff that just disappears. Our our brands that we're working with have stuff disappear, and they, I mean, they can't even like our our some of our firearms clients can't even post on TikTok because it's literally against the guidelines. TikTok will not allow you to have a firearm in the in the image. If it's in the image, it'll get taken down. Now, again, like you said earlier, 
not everybody experiences this because you have 12 followers and sometimes it doesn't right. get on the radar. Um, but a, a Kindle, um, who you mentioned earlier, if, if Kindle's posting, a lot of times she has animal rights activists who follow her just to report it. And then they can send a flag up the ranks that way too. Um, same for these, some of these companies. Um, so a lot, uh, we're working with a lot of them now. Um, but I think we'll probably stay in the hunt fish shoot lane for a while. Yep. It, it doesn't make sense to try to go too wide. Um, and, and, and admittedly, I would say we're more, we, oh, there's no doubt we are more on the hunt shoot. Really. We're, we're trying to bring in the fishing brands. Um, there's some nuances to the fishing industry which your audience may or may not care about. We can talk about that if you want to. Jacob would be great yeah. to talk through some of this. Um, th it's it's a little tougher because of the lower average sale price of some of these items for us to do what we're doing with like, like a Garmin is $600. That's obviously a profitable item to sell or yeah. whatever it is. Like I, I just made up a price off the top of my head. It's about the running rate for one of their wearables. But for like moving $7 lures or whatever it is, you know, you can get up into even a $25 one that some people might say is expensive. Well, when you start getting into margins and, and moving that stuff at volume, it's a tough game to play and you have to be really good at it and specialize in it. So yep. we haven't quite dove into that as much. Um, we're working with some good partners on that to try to help us with that. But on the sales side, we're not playing in that space as much as we'd like to. Um, we're, we're kind of filling out the hunting side first because it's per item. I mean, pound for pound, hunters spend more than anybody in the outdoor audience that I'm aware of. Yep. Jacob, Jacob's talked about cyclists. You know, some of them might compare, but I mean, hunters are twenty eight hundred dollars a year. Anglers are fourteen hundred. Is that what you've seen, Joe? Yeah, I, I think I, the latest one I saw, and this is for saltwater, was like fifteen eight or something. Uh, yeah. Probably a little bit lower lower for bass fishing, just because you have so many people yeah, that, so. yeah. Uh, that don't have all the boats and other stuff, but uh, that's interesting. Yeah, it, it is because we. I remember, I remember who were we talking to. It was someone that does a lot with uh, with the USPS, and I was like, yeah, we we shipped out like twelve hundred, you know, packages uh, yesterday, and they're just like twelve hundred. You got what? They're like, what were yeah. your revenues? And and I didn't. And I, I'm not going to say what it was. It was a low number. Right. Like, what were you selling? I was like, you know, yeah, you're like twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, Five dollar packs of Slam Shady. <laughs> but to your point, like we specialize in that, and you know, some yeah. of inshore lures, and you know, you you kind of have to pick your niche, if you will. And yeah. uh, that's that's funny. Yeah. Um, and, and Jacob, Jacob's. Uh, pushing us along i would say because his jacob likes to hunt but there's no doubt that jacob's one passion in life is fishing so he, he's uh he's doing a good job of getting us in front of these fishing brands and uh, we're gonna get there we've got some that are starting to bite on us Pun, puns always intended by the way yeah, yeah. so jacob t tell me like you you came in after there was a little momentum but you've seen a massive amount of change so what how is your role changing like what are you doing today <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. I, when I first came on, it was uh, pretty much predominantly focused on the social media aspect, just ad focused. Gear wasn't in the, the game at all. Um, and that was going to try to introduce people to a new platform. Here, I'm giving you another social platform to manage as a brand. I'm giving you another platform to manage a uh, smaller audience as, as we were starting to grow and that kind of thing. And so we were just really trying to figure out where we we're going. The, bringing in the gear aspect of it has actually opened a lot more doors. People are a lot more ready to have that conversation of, okay, you're giving me a solution that is not just coming on and participating and talking about the brand, but we can actually have a, a sale or a, you know, the, the goal in mind is right there for people to be able to click and buy something. And so it's definitely helped engage those conversations a lot easier. Um, it has evolved and I hope it continues to evolve. You know, yeah. it's, it's a fun challenge being in a startup and, and us trying to figure out our way. Uh, and it's been a ton of fun and I've never been bored a day here. So that's <laughs> always a great thing. And I, I think it's cool going back to the gear stuff because it, it's almost like everyone loves Amazon, you know, because of the reviews and obviously they ship everything pretty quick. But the reviews are so cool. It's it's probably the first thing I, before I even look at some of the bullet points about the product. I'm going down to see you know what people are saying about it, and so you've kind of built in a lot of that social proof too, right? With your users for like Garmin, let's just say, where now you're able to see all right, all these people here in my same state or or who are just like me because if they're on go wild, let's face it, they're probably like you, and uh, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, the, yeah, the challenge you can also kind of assess their skill too. Yeah. So we've got the trophy system and the points built in to where, 
Now, if I'm looking for a new rod and reel, I can go to the guys that I know that are catching a bunch of fish and kind of validate based on what they're using as being a good recommendation. And I mean, you know, like I spend enough money just buying lures in general, but if you're looking for that one particular thing because you're upgrading, it's good to have a resource like that to go and, and see what the the pros are using. Yeah, the one the one challenge too that I think we're we're working towards solving. I think by the end of the year we'll have a system that can handle this better. The problem with Amazon's reviews, well, there's two problems. If I were to review a saltwater rod and reel combo, my opinion should not mean as much as yours or Jacob's, Joe. Like I don't know what I'm talking about, right? Like it's just not my I, I don't do that like you guys do. In a five star world, though, everybody's opinion is the same. Mm. That that for for expensive gear, um, <clears throat> it's an imperfect system at the very least. With Amazon, though, what we saw last year with all these scams, it's kind of been this great race to four point two. Like everything on Amazon <laughs> has this four point two rating now because yeah. brands have figured out how to hack it with with promotions. And then there's literally some that, and Amazon's doing everything they can to get rid of this. It's just a tough system to fight because they're, they're, it's like whack-a-mole. You get rid of them here and they pop up somewhere else. <laughs> but I mean, have you guys had any of the random stuff that just shows up part of these scams? Like I've gotten a, a tire pressure monitor and like random stuff that just shows up at your house and they're shipping it to you to verify the sale so that they can get those, they can go in and put their own rating into yeah. their product. Yeah. So sketchy. So we're working on a system like Jacob was kind of alluding to, and we'll be rolling this out, I don't know, next 12 weeks or so. Um, the, that it, the, the product is ranked, you can go in and search by products, by skill level. So in, instead of, you know, we're, we might let you review, we care less about what you reviewed it as, is how skilled you are. Cause now we know you use this product and we know how skilled you are. Therefore, if Joe's really good at saltwater fishing, we might rank that product higher because Joe uses it where Brad uses it. It basically is a, you know, a wash, you know, we don't, Brad's not very good at it based off what we know about him. So we're not going to give much credit to that. So whereas my review on a Turkey call or something I do more often might get weighted a little more heavily. So we're, we're working on the ability to search by the skill set of the people that use the product, which I think is really nuanced and different. It's not something that I mean, Amazon can buy its way to anything and they, they're great at building products. I'm not saying they can't ever get there, but today they don't have that data yeah. set like we do from the social, like all the people that are sharing that insights. It helps the community. You know, it's like a rising tide raises all ships, right? Like if we're all sharing our insights together, we're going to shop smarter. So we, we hope that to be our competitive advantage over time. So on your platform, so there's obviously some members uh, who are listening, who who already have an account, and there's some who have never been on there, and I hope you guys do today. How how does the app know if I'm a great angler or I'm horrible, or if Good you're question. the best turkey caller in Kentucky? How does it know that? Yeah, well, no one would ever say I'm the best turkey caller in Kentucky. <laughs> I'm like, the, I'm probably the best turkey caller in this building right now. I'd say that with confidence. Whoa, whoa, okay? whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, whoa. Or at oh, least boy. on my floor. Jacob and I are actually in the same building, but different floors right now. Um, <laughs> uh, but anyways, the the way we do that is so we have a, a couple of different cool features that, uh, that help us figure out what you like to do. The the And it's not, I'm proud to say this is not creepy. This isn't like, a oh God, my phone's listening to you. It's like, no, you told us what you caught last year. So we know you're really good at catching this specific species of fish. So yeah. we have a trophy system. And it's self-submitted information. And this is not like a Boone and Crockett where, where we go out and verify data. But the you self-submit, you tell us, uh, the each species is a little different, right? Like uh, fishing, most of it's going to be weight and length. Um, but like, can you get into some of the more nuanced hunting species? Like the, a bear has a different measure, measurement than a whitetail, obviously. And we take that into consideration for each, each uh, species. And you can submit your information. And then it goes into a percentile ranking of how you rank against other people. So we know how Joe's uh, redfish compares to Jacob's. Like overall, we know overall, you may have a one-off, but if you've caught a ton of medium to really high ranking redfish, we know you're one of the better redfish fishermen that we have in our, our platform, right? So that's the first thing. The other thing we look at are the like time logs, which is essentially just a, an added level layer of content that we have when you post. So when you come back from a fishing trip, uh, Jacob likes to call the sunsets uh, trophies themselves for those who didn't catch anything. Uh, so and you're, you're like, well, I went fishing. I want to tell somebody about it. And you post your sunset photo where you didn't catch any fish and you can log time though. So you're saying I spent six hours fishing today. And over time that helps add in another layer of data that we get to understand how much time Joe spends outside versus Brad. 
you know, and, and vice versa. There's, I don't know, probably 60 different activities that you can log on there. So it gives us a good understanding of how people are using the products because across both of those things, you can tag gear. So, and even just posting in general, uh, which helps us figure out what gear is used for, but we, we can look at those categories and we have 500,000 products categorized, which is crazy. Like, but we actually set yeah. down and built out the categorization for that much, that many products. So it helps us feed in information to say that like, man, Joe's really good at this thing and he's using this. So this product is, it should rank higher than everything else. Jacob's really good at taking sunset picks. <laughs> Very good. I have the best sunset trophies on the platform. <laughs> we we did we did a webinar one time on on Facebook Live, and it just kind of came out of my mouth. And then later, like there was people on our on our platform hashtagging it, but I called it skunk. You know, skunk means you didn't catch anything. Called it a skunk set, and yeah. uh, it was that was a pretty uh, pretty fun. Yeah, you got, you guys should do negative points for sunset picks and. Uh, <laughs> saltwater catfish that's in blowfish no, because of the, uh, cause i know i know catfish and freshwater like you know it, it's it can be prestigious in some areas i know bill dance still doing catfish tournaments but man those saltwater cats are just nasty yeah, i went fishing with a couple of buddies that are fairly new to saltwater uh hit the guy's dad just moved to wilmington and then they he bought a timeshare or a condo down there and so they're both getting into saltwater fishing a little bit. And that was the first thing I told them was like, you catch a catfish, don't touch it. Just cut no. the line or get it off there. Don't touch it. Fast as you can. Yeah, we have those little, uh, they're catfish D hookers where you yeah, put one. Yeah. And you just kind of flip it off. You just hope you don't flip it back on you because those things, <laughs> it's just nasty. All right. So you started off as kind of the social platform, still completely, you know, social. It's very community based. It's all free, by the way. Like, okay. except the yep. gear, you got to pay for the gear. Yeah, but the, I the, figured. Pl the platform is free. You got a massive amount of new people signing up. <laughs> free gear. Um, but now there's there's been a slight change. Same with us. I mean, we did a similar thing. It was, you know, start off education is still the foundation. And now we talk a whole lot more about tackle. And so Luke and I joined you guys and had an absolute blast on the gear talk. So talk about how long has that been going on and how did all, all that evolve? That's its yeah. own separate podcast. And it is. Yeah. So we, we launched gearbox, the product, which is our econ product that, yep. that all of this integration is called gearbox because you can actually build out your own setups. So if you look at Jacob's profile, when, when you join, as you all are doing right now, uh, when you join, you'll see on Jacob's profile, He's got all these like Midwest bass fishing setup, fly fishing setup, whatever it is, you know, you can, and you can categorize that gear, gives you a chance to brag about it. Um, and, and, and we're working in other functionality that I can't disclose yet that ties into all that stuff, but it's a fun way to see what people or other people are using. Like I, if I was getting ready to buy a Turkey call, I would go to my buddy, Mike and see what Mike's using on his gear. So it's, it's a nice way to see what other people are using too. Um, but that product is called gearbox. So last year, we launched a show called Gearbox Talk, which is about what are people using? What is in their gearbox? And this doesn't necessarily mean they're on our platform. I mean, obviously we're new. I don't have uh, a lot of these big time guys that are, you know, huge influencers or on Netflix or whatever it is, you know, yeah. that have their own, their own presence. They may not be on our show, but that doesn't mean like we don't want to talk to them and get something we can learn from them. And so a lot of what Jacob and I do with that show is talk to people from a beginner to intermediate level. I think there's a huge knowledge gap in, in content that's out there in the hunting and fishing space. And there's so much that's assumed, you know, when I was trying to, I mentioned I grew up hunting uh, with my dad, but it was like small game stuff, you know, it's casual too. And then I started trying to get into whitetail and I'm reading about it. And I'm like, I don't even understand. I read this whole article and I don't even understand what they're talking about because I did, I hadn't never done it before. And when I was trying to read about it, like I didn't understand certain aspects of how white, of whitetail behavior that weren't covered. They just kind of jump in 40% ahead of where my understanding was. So, and, and we really feel like, especially after last year, with the amount of people who are trying, you know, do you know how many people started fishing last year? What do you know what the final numbers were? It was it was multi millions. Which I heard fourteen on the high end is what I've yeah, heard. Yeah, so. it, it could have been. I mean, I thought it was closer to nine or ten, but still, that's that's absurd. I mean, you yeah, know, it's yeah. crazy. What was, what was hunting? hunting? Hunting saw somewhere between a million and a half, two million. It's 
crazy. And then overall in the outdoors, I mean, I'm guessing it was probably a 30% lift, which would be 30 million people in the United States. Yeah. So you wow. have all these people who are trying to learn this stuff, some of which is kind of scary. Think about all these new gun owners. Like that's kind of... <laughs> awful in some ways like it's great if you're a gun advocate yeah. and you got all these people who understand your way of life but like i worry about people we've done several episodes on home safety firearm safety yeah. uh, we've done a lot of episodes you know breaking down the simplest of things things that some people who fish might laugh at but jacob sits there and will break down really simple things like what is a line leader and and we'll we'll talk through all of these really basic questions and then every now and then you know we'll get a guy on like Jack Carr, you know, who's a famous author now in his fourth book, he's a New York Times bestseller, um, was a, a sniper, a Navy SEAL sniper, and was in the Middle East for 20 years. And and uh, he came on and broke down his long distance shooting setup. And, you know, gun nuts would like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing yeah. to see everything that Jack Carr uses. So it's not always beginner level. But with Gearbox Talk, Jacob and I really try to think of the things that just kind of get jumped over yeah. and I, I mean we even do this to the level that our teammate Braden will sit down and look at search volume to see what people are searching for and then look at search volume versus what's actually out there to say hey there's a ton of people searching for this but there's not a lot of content out there for it so we should go answer that question with gearbox talk it's so smart i mean for us it was fishing knots you know it's one of those things yeah. you just assume you you know i assumed everyone was in boy scouts you learn how to tie knots and maybe you someone taught you and it's mind boggling. Every time we put a not post out, it kills it. Yeah. Uh, crazy. And it so, will continue to, because as new people come in, they find that content. That's kind of what we've seen too. We've got some videos that just continue to, to climb. On the hunting, is there one thing in particular, like knots, is there one kind of topic that, that seems to attract a lot of beginners that are just, um, that it gets skipped over a lot? The one thing I think is the hardest to understand, like if you're going to get into whitetail hunting is what caliber of gun to use or, or, uh, that, that one I think is there's a ton of arguing over it and it usually ends up being in like these ballistics nerds and dude, for anybody that doesn't shoot, it's a math game. Like everything is math, which is why I'm not very good at it. Uh, my, my co-founder Zach, the data scientist has gotten into long distance shooting because it's all math. It's all these crazy conversions and all this stuff. So there's a lot of arguing over the ballistics there. I don't get into that game. I'm like, how efficient is that? Is that good enough to, to get the job done for me? Um, but th that's one on the hunting side too. You'll see a lot of argument over broadheads. There's all just, just like in the fishing side, there's tons of types of broadheads. And, you know, I feel like every year there's some kind of new evolution at the trade show, the archery trade show that Jacob and I go to. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, there's some nuances there, but at the end of the day, a lot of the, the most successful types of broadheads are what have been around for forever. You know, we had a guy come on and talk for an hour about just broadhead selection. And you, it's like you would think that that all could be covered under the sun in that amount of time, but we just covered the most beginner levels. But that's the kind of thing that's a really important decision. You know, uh, if you're going to shoot something at, at a living animal, you need to make sure you're confident in what 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 gear setup you have. Yeah. So um, we we have a cool one coming out. I, I what's what's amazing about this is I actually my my knowledge of stuff is just multiplying like crazy. Like I have my own hobbies that I like, but I mean. Jacob comes on a lot of the fishing shows to to help guide me because that's out of my expertise. Um, I, I had a whole show last week though about spear fishing, which I've actually done once, but very amateur league. And then I so I got to just come in and my team helps me with the questions so I don't look totally stupid. But like I got to just talk to this guy about spear fishing and I'm, this whole world opened up while I was talking to him, you that's know. Cool. And so it's really like I really enjoy it because there's things that we we go over that some people have probably like in Kentucky people probably if you've never really traveled much to these areas like uh, that where you could do this like you've probably never thought a lot about this but it's fascinating to hear how deep that can go you know that's very cool um who is the spear fisherman uh gosh it, with Finn and Forage I uh, huh. now his name's eluding me I think his name's Eric there's like three of these guys that were supposed to come on and then two of them had uh for various reasons, couldn't make it. And I think I ended up talking with Eric. And I, Eric, if you're watching this, I am so sorry that I forgot your name. Um, that's just more me than you. Um, but yeah, Finn and Forge. <laughs> it's like you. Uh, I'll go look, <laughs> it's, it's, I'll, 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 we'll put a, a link in the show notes because I love that stuff. Yeah, they they have a really awesome website that um, which is I think they're on Go Wild too. Um, so we kind of stumbled into them. I think they're doing their own YouTube videos too, but they have some awesome content and super knowledgeable. Um, about the space and their whole mission is to help people understand how to do it safe again that's a dangerous sport oh, too yeah. just just yeah. like my worry about firearms he he was talking about um 
the the amount of people that come into the space and and you know go by themselves for one thing like they just don't understand the risk at hand so uh it's 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 fun to be on a show to where we can hopefully get people excited to get outside but also do it safely can you imagine if ricky bobby up there and had to go underwater and hold his breath to shoot a deer every time like that would be dangerous man <laughs> <laughs> not advisable some people that's like what some people's uh the reason they suck at shooting is because they hold their breath ironically so, really uh, yeah yeah so it's pretty funny uh yeah all right so pivot real quick and, and then we'll talk about some of the future stuff i knew you guys are doing some tournaments too that that's a question we get a lot i mean people love the online you know virtual tournaments what are you guys doing on the the tournament side I'll let Jacob talk through this. I think he's been a little more involved in this than, the, than I have. But I, what I'll say is, you know, a lot of the, I found a lot of those tournaments to be really intimidating. If you're if you're joining, it, especially the the in person one at One Lake, or you got to come out like or whatever it is. This is an online one, so it, and it, and it's totally free to enter. So I'll let Jacob talk through that. But I think if you're if you've never done a tournament, this is your time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we really try to lower the barrier for people to get involved with it. Uh, there are rules, but it's a lot of things that are kind of, you know, there's some things that we trust you to to follow through on. Um, but we tried something different this time. It's a four week tournament. And then each of the four weeks, we're going to use a certain type of lure. So, you know, the first week will be a uh, spinner bait. Second week will be a Senko. And the third week That's will cool. be a topwater frog. And then fourth week is Angler's Choice. So you get to pick whatever your favorite is. Freestyle. Yeah. So, you know, there's prizes for each week for the, you know, the the biggest fish. And then the culmination is going to be the most inches caught. So it's kind of like a kayak tournament, you know, take a picture, measure it. We've got a little token that will certify that you're participating in the tournament with your, your measuring device. Um, and it's through mid-June to mid-July. We would like to get to a spot where we're doing like a spring and fall type thing. Cool. Uh, the timing wise with this just worked best for, for, you know, mid June. Uh, it's a ton of fun. We had great participation last year and you get to see a lot more content around fishing, which I love. And you see people progress because you'll see people that are more beginner that are in the app they start fishing the tournament. They see a little bit of success. And that's the best part of it is you see people just having fun and encouraging each other at the same time. Too cool. Talk about the trails real quick. Cause I remember the first time I got on there, I, I didn't get it at first. Now I do talk about how you kind of built this and really how you organized it. Yeah. The, the biggest fear we had when we launched this thing was that no one would come, right? It's like, <laughs> what if we launched this and no one shows up? So the, we talked through some of the challenges with other social media, um, really to get engagement on any platform, you need followers, right? That's, that's yeah. the challenge on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, whatever it is, just posting doesn't mean you'll get seen. Now there's some platforms like a TikTok that that have come around and they've made it more viral, more accessible on that. But in general, if you have a question on fly fishing, posting on your Instagram account to your 300 followers, you're only going to reach 10% of those. So you're already down to, to a very small portion of, of your audience. And then how many of them are actually going to know the answer, right? So right. We, we decided to come at this more from a Reddit perspective. So, you know, on Reddit, you don't need any followers to post and to get answers, right? And you might get made fun of because it's Reddit, but, uh, you know, at least that's my experience with a lot of Reddit Redditors. Um, but we wanted to have a platform where you could post into and engage with people quickly, regardless of your following. And then as you find people, like if you want to, you find Jacob and you like Jacob, and you want to see all of his content, you can follow Jacob and you'll get that regardless of what forum he posts in, which are called trails. Um, so as you post into a trail, anybody that logs in to see that this week could see that and interact with it. So, so it's the concept is that you shouldn't have to build a following to get answers for questions. And, and with this model, we typically, a lot of first posts will get 10, 15 comments on it, welcoming you to the platform. And then likewise, I've seen people new to the platform ask a question and I've seen as many as 60 comments on somebody's first post uh, about a quote, like with a question involved because they're, we, we have a system that you can po post as a question. So if you post as a question into deer hunting and I'm following deer hunting, I might get notified to help answer your questions. We've built a system that kind of trickles this out. And, you know, it's, it's a really great way to crowdsource knowledge 
into things that are hyper specific. So um, some things there's like a broad hunting and broad fishing category for things that just, you know, we don't have a fishing category for everything. There's types of fishing we probably don't cover. Uh, Like recently, all these falconry guys hit the platform and they're like, Hey, I'm hunting, but I'm doing it in a totally different way. You guys should create a trail for me. So, Hey, now we got a falconry trail that maybe only 300 people follow or something that's very small but these guys love it because they have a new home for this very small audience yeah. anyways right so um the the trails is just to help you find the right people faster falconry uh yes. it's fascinating i didn't know i didn't know it was still uh, people do they're hardcore into it oh yeah yeah like yeah. if you got a problem with your neighbor's dog get into falconry <laughs> <laughs> little yep yep dogs no more <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I promise I didn't shoot it. And I, I, did, yeah. I didn't have anything to do with it. I didn't touch your dog. My falcon did. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the future, you, you guys have the app, the Go Wild app. You have the time to go wild. That's the, uh, the the desktop version I have over here on this other screen. You've got obviously the gearbox and we're getting a lot into gear. What's the future of you guys? Are, are, are you guys fulfilling your own stuff or is it still some, some affiliate some, some filling and what's what's it's, next it's more of a what's known as a drop ship relationship with a lot of the brands we yep. work with uh for anybody that doesn't live in the econ world that just means we work with brands and and you may buy through us and they'll end up helping us with that order so they'll, they'll ship it to you directly but our customer service still handles everything that's uh, you know for where we are today that helps us scale quickly oh yeah that's um, smart we we are building up a a warehouse here. We're in Louisville, Kentucky. It's the best city in the country, literally, to be to do what we're doing because we we are within a day's drive of seventy percent of the country. So we can do two day shipping anywhere. So the the plan is to grow out our what we're inventorying um, as we grow, and we are starting to carry more and more inventory. A lot of that is leaning on the products I mentioned earlier, like the Garmin's. Um, we, we carry some Vortex items in-house just so we have access to that. A lot of that too, it's an advantage to just simply have inventory right now with the supply chains as backwards as they are. Mm-hmm. So the, that, that helps us. I mean, really though, when I look at what the future of Go Wild is, um, actually Jacob has this analogy and, and I really love this analogy. Whether you're into hunting or, or fishing or whatever, you know, you have your local gear shop. You know, when I go on vacation, I like to go on. J- Jacob told me the first time I tried surf fishing, he's like, man, I can give you all the tips, but the best place to go is just go to your local, your guide shop or your local shop, right? The tackle shop. Yeah. Um, same thing with hunting, you know, archery shops, local shops are great. The problem is those shops are going away. I mean, I, I don't like to admit it. I don't think it's as much a problem in fishing as it is in hunting, but the, um, as fishing grows, but there's still big box stores that have kind of eaten the lunch a lot of a lot of these mom and pops. Yeah. Our, our view of how this whole ecosystem works of the social side, the, the gear side, our, our content is the same way that you guys would walk into your local tackle shop, your fly shop, your archery shop. You know, you walk in, it's a fun place to be. You get to hear stories. You get to hang out with people you like, and you probably walk out the door buying something that, you know, you, you found about through the community and, and you supported the business. Um, so, so we really want to be that. And we're still defining what that means. Um, you know, I think over time, you'll see us start to add in some loyalty. We, we do, even right now, there's some things you can open up in the platform. If you share the app, you can earn, um, I think we have a $10 gift card in there right now that you can earn from inviting some friends. We're going to continue to build on those reward systems to really try to build this ecosystem that keeps people involved, keeps people engaged and gives them a home. Um, you know, just, I don't, I don't want to be the mom and pop corner store that's not there anymore. So we really want to yeah. continue to grow this. And um, the final kind of, I didn't really mention this much and um, I'll just kind of tack this on. We we are trying to be more than just another Walmart, you know, I, I, another place to buy something. Yep. Um, we, we have an arm of our business that is that puts uh, a percentage of our, our proceeds into a nonprofit. I'm on the board of that nonprofit. It's Raising My Doors. So if you're buying gear through us and helping us grow, we're going to donate into a camp that teaches kids to fish, to camp, to hunt. That's awesome. Um, and, and, and that camp's touching about 100 kids uh, per camp that they, they're able to impact their lives. They teach their parents so that because that's a big barrier too. the parents often don't know how to, to do this stuff. Yeah. So and then then we're doing <laughs> we were ramping up to eight camps a year uh, before COVID. Now we're back down to like three trying to ease back into it. But, um, you know, this funding matters a lot. It's not like you're donating into this giant nonprofit that you don't know where it's going. Yeah. Um, it we're, we're trying to fund a whole camp this year through our proceeds that we get to put into that. So too cool. Really proud of that. What, what's it called? The, the camp's called Raise Them Outdoors. Raising Them Outdoors. Okay, cool. Raise Raise um, E.M. Raise, raise them out, raise them outdoors. Mm-hmm. Country. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You got to add a little bit of Kentucky into it. It's not from Kentucky, but that's how we talk. I love it. All right, cool. Well, uh, guys, this has been awesome. Where can everyone find you? Download the app. Uh, tell every, and I guess, subscribe to podcast, your YouTube channel. You guys have a lot of a lot of things going on. Too many things sometimes. Um, really, if you want to, if you want to check out the platform, the, I mean, really, the first thing to do is just download it and see if you like the the experience, right? I would just go to downloadgowild.com, and and as you sign up, that's going to get you. You'll get a DM from me. Everybody that joins the platform gets a DM from me. I don't send that personally. I'm not sitting there waiting on you to download it. But I will respond if you respond to that. That actually does go to my inbox. You guys are both robots you. now. You're both yes. robots. Yeah. Now that part of me is the robot, Brad. Some <laughs> people will respond and ask if it's really me or a robot. And I usually send a robot dancing emoji uh, or GIF because we have Giphy built in. Um, but go to downloadgowild.com, sign up that way. And and then, I mean, if you want to just look at gear, you can go to shopgowild.com. But really, I, I would even, you know, yeah, we'd love for you to spend money with us. But I think the best way to start on our platform is just to download the app, see how awesome this community is, and, and to just start posting some content there. And it's then you'll a, find... It's a free app too. It's all free. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's totally free because we're really trying to make the value play of having you in our community and learning about gear. And that's how we're trying to, to make the business successful and monetize it through the gear. So if you join that way though, that that's to me the most ideal thing. And you'll stumble into our, our podcast and that kind of stuff too. Cool. And for all the Salt Strong fans, get in there, download the app. We have our trail, find it. We have been really bad. It's It's still very new. Uh, yeah, but we've we had just a, got it up yeah. recently, so we'll give yeah, you a pass. Yeah. But not after this, because now I'm going to shame you. <laughs> well, yeah, well, <laughs> now we got to get. We, we, we have to name. <laughs> what, we have to get like a certain amount of people in there, and then we'll, you know, we'll start getting super yeah. active in there. But yeah, um, hey man, yeah. we'll give away something. Let's do it right now. Uh, huh? If if we hit uh, what we'll call it, like, what do you guys have in your Facebook group? How many are in there? Oh, like seventy five thousand people. Right. Or low bar here, twenty five hundred people that get into the salt strong trail when we hit that number we'll give away a uh i don't know like 200 dollars to spend on on with, with us like they can pick out a rod rod or whatever yeah. i don't know is that, how's that sound i'm digging it write it down 200 bucks to a giveaway to somebody all right guys you heard it there make sure to get the app follow us so what's the easiest way to find our trail and to follow it for someone new so yeah, so when you download it, just look at the top and hit Trail Mix, um, and then you can scroll all the way to the bottom, and you'll find it there. Sweet. And then nice and easy. You had you have you have two podcasts, right? I do. Yeah, Gearbox Talk is on YouTube, and then Restless Native is available wherever you listen to podcasts. Okay. So Gearbox Talk, just look up Go Wild, and you'll find our channel. Cool. Uh, any new plans for the the hair, Jacob? This is after a no, haircut. Probably just another trim. But- <laughs> nothing exciting <laughs> i think i think you could you could you guys might be able to kill it by adding like you know different performance uh pomades and uh and hair gels and uh into your your gearbox my my idea this morning was to have like a cartoon version of jacob that just says kentucky waterfall under it <laughs> <laughs> love it we're gonna, we're, we're gonna sell that as a sticker love it Cool. Guys, this has been fun. Uh, I wish Luke could have been here on this one. Uh, the four of us had an absolute blast on yours. Uh, we will make sure in our show notes to put a link to all this stuff we talked about, including that uh, podcast slash YouTube video we did with uh, with them. It was, uh, it was an absolute hoot. Uh, we talked about uh, basically some of the biggest mistakes that we've made when it comes <laughs> right. to tackle. And there's some pretty, uh, pretty funny ones in there. And yeah, for sure. It's a good show. Yeah, it was, it was, it was good, but guys, thank you again. Amazing job with, uh, with the app. Love what you do. Love what you guys stand for. And, uh, and I, I, I know this will continue to grow as we see more and more of this, you know, kind of censorship slash bullying. Uh, I know you guys have had some like hunting Facebook groups that have been, completely terminated like yeah we didn't even talk about that yeah we've seen some of like two hundred thousand just gone overnight crazy uh (laughs) i'm praying that does not happen to our facebook group but it's another reason that you know we're we're teaming up with groups like go wild and obviously we have our own insider platform just for our paid members and uh it's it it, man it's it's a little nerve-wracking to have like zero control over you know, all the content stuff you're putting out there. So all the more reason to join your all's insider group and, and power to you for doing that. I think it's smart. Yep. No ditto. Ditto guys. Well, thank you again. And uh, everyone go check out, go wild. And once again, all the show notes will be at saltstrong.com 
up at the top, type in or look at fishing tips, or you can do a search for it and you'll see it right there. Just look for the big old beautiful hair. We out. Peace. Cause fishing, it's in my soul. It was passed down to me from the days of old. Find us on the water if there was a way. It's been said my papa, he wrote the book on catching big reds and 20 pound snook. I wish I knew. Yeah.